Hey, let's talk about uh, last night's Republican debate that you saw right here in WMUR. There's a lot of good moments that we can certainly talk about, no question about that, starting with a heated exchange between New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and Senator Marco Rubio. Let's dispel with this fiction that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. He is trying to change this country. He wants America to become more like the rest of the world. We don't want to be like the rest of the world. We want to be the United States of America. And when I'm elected president, this will become once again the single greatest nation in the history of the world, not the disaster Barack Obama has imposed upon us. Senator Rubio, thank you. I do want to bring in Governor Bush on this Hold because on you've made this. Excuse me. If you'd like to respond to the economic. I think he directly right. mentioned Please. me and my record Governor in there. Christie. So I think I get a chance to respond. You see, everybody, I want the people at home to think about this. That's what Washington, D.C. does. Does. The drive-by shot at the beginning with incorrect and incomplete information, and then the memorized 25-second speech that is exactly what his advisors gave him. See, see Marco, Marco, the thing is this. When you're president of the United States, when you're a governor of a state, the, the memorized 30-second speech where you talk about how great America is at the end of it doesn't solve one problem for one person. They expect you to plow the snow. They expect you to get the schools open. And when the worst natural disaster in your state's history hits you, they expect you to rebuild their state, which is what I've done. None of that stuff happens on the floor of the United States Senate. It's a fine job. I'm glad you ran for it. But it does not prepare you for president of the United States. Chris. Chris, your state got hit by a massive snowstorm two weeks ago. You didn't even want to go back. They had to shame you into going back. All right, that was Chris Christie, obviously, and Marco Rubio, joined now by Scott Spradling, political analyst. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you too, John. Yeah, we were talking about before, uh, that exchange in particular before this program here, uh, and if there was a moment where a candidate really laid another candidate out, that might have been it. That's the moment that I think Chris Christie won the debate. He took it from that point forward. He turned that debate night into a referendum on the importance and value of experience in office and having boots on the ground with real decisions and taking responsibility. That has been the Achilles heel for Marco Rubio, and it was really exposed last night. But Marco Rubio had to know coming in after a strong finish in Iowa, uh, riding at second here in the polls, that he was going to be a target in one shape or form. Um, um, how do you think he responded? Well, he was either clearly told by his team or decided himself to pivot on every attack against him and make it about an attack on President Barack Obama. And I think, unfortunately, that fell flat. It may work once, but because he didn't engage, it made it look like he had no answers, and he was eviscerated for it. Yeah, he was criticized for always repeating his answer, and then he basically said the same thing again. Uh, but uh, did he appear rattled to you at all? Do you think they kind of played right into the hands of everybody saying, you know, you're not ready for this? Definitely. I think you, you've seen Chris Christie on the campaign trail say, we don't want to do a another freshman Senator Barack Obama thing as Republicans. Right. And this played right into that narrative. And, uh, you know, my predecessor here, Andy Smith, who was just talking to you about numbers, I feel bad for him trying to figure out how the <laughs> polls come out over something this significant that really can shake things up with a few thousand votes that are going to make the difference. And I want to point out that maybe this is even more glaring because Marco Rubio has had such good debate, debate performances in the past. All right, let's move things forward a little bit with another topic during this debate when I had the chance to ask candidates about eminent domain. A project, though, known as the Northern Pass, would bring hydroelectric power from Canada into the northeastern grid. Do you see eminent domain as an appropriate tool to get that project done? It's not that I love it, but eminent domain is absolutely nece it's a necessity for a country, and certainly it's a necessity for our country. So Josh, would that be yes on the Northern Pass project? Yes, the, the, yes, yes, yes. the difference between eminent domain for public purpose, as Donald said, roads and infrastructure, pipelines, and all that, that's for public purpose. But what Donald Trump did was use him in a domain to try to take the property of an elderly woman on the strip in Atlantic City. That is not public purpose. That is downright wrong. Let me just, you know, he wants to be a tough guy. A lot of times, you'll have, you'll have, and, and it doesn't work very well with How that. tough is it a to take of a times, property you, from an elderly talk, woman? Let me talk, quiet. How a tough is it? A lot of times... Yeah, another one of those moments right there. So Donald Absolutely. Trump and Jeb Bush, they've mixed it up before, but 
Who do you think won this exchange? I think Governor Bush did very, very well on this for a couple of reasons. Number one, he showed that I'm not going to back down kind of mentality and backed it up with a pretty hard punch to the uh, New Jersey casino owner uh, in Donald Trump. That's one. But secondly, your question about eminent domain and Northern Pass. First of all, kudos for educating the nation on uh, eminent domain. We saw the Google searches. <laughs> but beyond that, domain? yeah, it was good. But beyond that, too, this is an inherently local issue that gets people fired up. And look, we know. Uh, Eminent domain and Northern Pass aren't a part of it, but that wasn't your question. He took the bait, he jumped right in, and that's a local issue that could have a weird X factor for people that don't like these energy projects. Yeah, uh, well, for Donald Trump, you know, he's had his little moments in the past where he's kind of, you know, uh, diminished perhaps the stature of Governor Bush. But when he put up his, his hand and I mean, New Hampshire voters reacted differently to Donald Trump than they have in the past. Completely. He did not have a cheering section in that room last night. It was very clear that uh, the the governors had a very good night and that Jeb Bush was having personally a good night and he fought back admirably. All right. We talked about uh, two of the three governors on the stage, but John Kasich was there as well. And he had some moments. No yes. question about that. Not only did he have a great moment, his best moment was laying out the 100 day strategy and then warning everybody to put on your seatbelts, promising that he can deliver because that's been his record as an Ohio governor. People look at his resume and they start to like it. And I would also say that his best decision is the one that uh, behind the scenes was perfect. He and his campaign coordinated getting on the WMUR set at the 11 o'clock to lead the news talking about the debate. That was a master stroke and a really good idea to just push the minds towards him. Yeah, it was first come first serve. I'll point that out. <laughs> but if there's any memo to the candidates from last night's debate, don't accuse, accuse a live crowd of being bought and paid for, right? Not a Donald good Trump idea. Did. Definitely not a good idea. And you, you, here's the thing about Donald Trump. What we are seeing in those polls going into New Hampshire's vote is that we're seeing a trend going down just a little bit. The question is, can he stay above water? Because again, all due respect to Andy Smith, it is so hard to figure out the exact numbers right now with a big field and a debate like this that makes a difference in the minds of those undecided voters. Yeah, with a 45% undecided voter cushion, yeah, we point to that and say, Welcome that's to why New that Hampshire. happened. All right, thanks very much, Scott. Good seeing you. Thanks, Scott.